I can vouch for the mac and cheese. She's got it figured out for sure. If you have not been to Sweet Carrot in Grandview, uh, put it on your agenda this week. You have to go and, and, and taste her food. Um, so after a 10-year career in politics, I reached a point where I could not do it any longer. I, there was not enough people that I wanted to get up in the morning and help to get elected. So I walked away from the only dream that I ever had with a political career and gave myself three months to be open to the world and just I figured some business idea was going to pop up and I'd be able to pursue it. So the girlfriend I had at the time burned an unbelievable number of Yankee candles, like just nonstop, every room of her apartment. It just, and, and they, so I couldn't figure out, number one, how she was pissing away so much of her disposable income on scented candles. <laughs> and they never seemed like they burned the whole way down. They never smelled like, seemed like they smelled true to scent. And so she, uh, we had just started dating, but I convinced her to quit her job, uh, a really good job that she'd been with Abercrombie & Fitch for a long time, and we were going to start a candle company together. And so that was nine years ago. We started with a single candle store up in Worthington, and now we have a seven-figure fragrance design business that has grown past what any of us could, either one of us could have, uh, could have dreamed of. There is countless opportunities along the way in which vulnerability is, just comes into play. Every time you launch a new website, hire a new employee, open up a new location, every one of those is a leap of faith. And that leap of faith is, I think, what holds most people back from pulling the trigger and actually pursuing the idea that they have. No matter what that idea is, it's like, what if it fails? What if it does this? So I want to share two quick stories of vulnerability that are linked together, and it, they happened in one month, about two years into our business. So we had, we had opened two stores right, right in the first two years, and things were going well. People seemed to like the candles, and they seemed to enjoy the coming in to visit our stores, and we were pretty happy with where we were. We get a call one day and somebody says, I've got an order for you for $25,000 worth of scented candles. Now, I think our largest transaction up to that point was $300. So for us, this was like winning the lottery. So we immediately say like, all right, well, we're going out tonight to celebrate. We go to Z Cucina, one of our favorite places down in Grandview. And we're sitting there and we order fancy cocktails and we're clinking glasses and trying to make a list of all the ways we're going to spend the mountain of money we're about to make and how big our pool in our backyard should be. And after, after about 10 minutes of... of enjoying it, my wife says, you know, we're going to need a bigger melter. We're going to need a bigger wax melter to, to be able to keep up with this. I'm like, yeah, we're going to probably need an overnight crew to come in after the stores close and pour this through the night. And so I, I always keep this notebook with me to grab all the amazing ideas that pop in my head. And so I, I pull out 10 minutes into dinner, I pull out my notebook and we just spend the rest of the dinner just making a list of all the things we're going to do and the people we need to hire, the ways we're going to leverage this one contract into all the other $25,000 contracts we're going to get. I don't even know that we ordered a second round. We just spent the rest of the dinner with that notebook open, just plowing our way through it. So fast forward almost exactly 30 days uh, forward. We're heading to work on a Saturday morning, and the guy who owns the salon next to our Grandview store calls and says, hey, there's some smoke coming out of the second floor attic, and they've asked us all to step out of our businesses. So all the, all the business owners are across the street waiting for the firefighters to tell us that it's clear to go back in the, in the building. So come on over when you get here, you won't be able to get into your, your spot. So for those who are familiar with Grandview and who remember this, there was 23 businesses on one city block in basically one building. There was a first floor of retail, then a second floor of offices, and then an, then an attic unused over top of that. So they were poking around and an electrical fire started on Friday afternoon up in the attic, but there was no ventilation up there, so it just sort of slowly spread and smoldered over all night through the Friday night. And by Saturday, it was covered, the entire attic, but there was just only tiny wisps of smoke coming out because there's no oxygen up there. And so as myself and all the other business owners with businesses in this building are sitting across the street waiting for the go-ahead to open our businesses and start our busy Saturday, one of the firefighters pokes his poker through the ceiling, the fire can now finally breathe, and the whole business ignite, or the whole building ignites and burns down to the ground. So we're watching this in, this in this print shop across the street, and it's every range of human emotion. Some people are just stunned, silenced, they're watching it. Other people are like, you know, trying to break it up with kind of nervous laughter and jokes or trying to lighten the mood. There's other people who are just hysterical in tears. There's one woman in the background who's just like, it's like watching your child die. It's like watching your child die. I'm like, nope, it's like watching your fully insured store catch on fire, and they'll give you a check, and we'll find another spot. So, so it reaches a point where I, I, I've had three hours of fire watching and crying listening to it. I, I, I can't take it any longer. So I tell my wife, like, let's just go get some lunch. Like, there's nothing we can do here to, to help the situation. So she wants something warm and comforting. She's a, she's a little upset. So 
we decided to go down the street to Bob Evans. So there's kind of 10 minutes of awkward silence and we're just like, wow, this is crazy. Like, that was, what are we gonna do? And then she's like, oh, we should probably email the staff and let them know what's happening that we have to adjust the schedule and we should probably put together a inventory of things to give to our insurance company to, to get it going. And so I pull out this same notebook and we spend the rest of that meal just making a to-do list, all the things we have to do. And so when I think now of, of all the lessons that I've learned over the nine years in our business and all the things that I think separate out the successful businesses that we're surrounded with versus the ones that are no longer with us, I think the realization that it doesn't matter what happens, good or bad, in the end, you get 10 minutes to wallow in it, you get 10 minutes to just feel it, and then you have to open your book, make your list, and go to work. And as soon as you realize that it's the exact same thing that happens when you get the biggest contract that you've ever dreamed of and your business burns all the way to the ground, it is the exact same response. You just get up and go to work. It's what I love about it every day. I get up in the morning and I have no idea whether we're gonna burn down another building. It wasn't our fault, by the way. We're gonna burn, <laughs> whether we're gonna burn down another building or whether I'm gonna close the deal of our lifetime. I just know that it's gonna be variety and hard work and just being open and vulnerable to that uh, has made it the best decision ever. Thank you.